This is the how to get away with murder in 15 minutes. Or no, this is the how to get away with murder recap. <laughs> and it's called how to get away with murder in 15 minutes. I'm Larry Brown Jr. And this is... I'm Janiah Wright. And so this episode recaps episode number two of how to get away with murder season one called It's All Her Fault. It's all her fault. It's all her fault. We're starting the timer now because we've got 15 minutes to do this and we are going. Janiyah, it's all her fault. <laughs> Whose fault is it? Whose fault is it? I don't know. It could be the fault of Annalise Keating. It could be the fault mm -hmm. of, uh, of of Michaela. I mean, yeah, Michaela. It could be the fault of Laura. We don't know whose fault it is. Those are people who are students of Annalise Keating. Let's go back to the other, other episode to watch that. However, in this episode of How to Get Away with the how slow down? How to get away with murder? <laughs> it's the, the time catcher. It's, it's the time catcher. Oh it's my god! It's 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 oh it's so much. We you guys, can like, do this, LBJ. We, Stay focused. Stay focused. Let <laughs> We start this episode with yes. some drama in the uh in, in the classroom as well as the, the Keating and Associates firm. And yes. in the Keating and Associates firm, we find out that this rich woman, this rich this millionaire, uh Miss Saint Vincent. Her name, her first name though is uh oh gosh. Her husband's Marjorie. name is Max. Marjorie. Marjorie, yes, Marjorie's to the ends. So Marjorie St. Vincent has been murdered, and her husband, Max St. Vincent, ha is, is, is suspected of her murder. And so what happens is Annalise Keating and associates and the co-associates, her students in her uh, law in her in her class, show up to the law, they, they show up to the scene of the crime and try to figure out how did this murder take place. Annalise Keating also told us and she told her students, I don't care if my clients are guilty or innocent. My guys, my job is to get them off pretty much. And so they are now trying to construct this crime scene to figure out if Max St. Vincent killed Marjorie St. Vincent. And in Janai, we meet, we, we go through all of the various levels of figuring out this person's alibi, which they're trying to do for Max. And and then we we go through different things. What happened during all of this stuff? So here we have this really creepy figure of Max St. Vincent. I mean, the man is creep Ola. I mean, he's just one of those people that makes your skin crawl. And so meeting him, talking to him, you already think the man is guilty. Now, on top of that, he is a hunter, and the murder weapon for his wife was a hunting knife. And so they are doing everything they can to try to build up some good, a good um, alibi for him. But also, they need to bring in a character witness, and yes. they bring in his daughter Eloise. And they have bring they bring Eloise in so that she can vouch for her father's character. LBJ, come to find out that, and this all happens during the course of the trial. Come to find out that while we aren't sure if you know Max killed his Current, his second wife, mm -hmm, he mm -hmm. definitely killed his first wife, which yes. is Eloise's mother. Yes, he killed Eloise's mother in Switzerland years ago, and they bring Eloise to, to back to town, to back to Philly, to figure out, like, like, we need you to come and testify about your dad. And what ends up happening is the brilliant students of Annalise Keating figure out, wait a second, hold on, pump the brakes. This girl, the way that he described how to kill an animal, because he's got all this tax and stuff, and it's out on his own, and he's into like really killing animals, you had to know something about anatomy. And the person who killed Eloise his mom, Max St. Vincent's first wife, who we later found out his real name wasn't Max St. Vincent. It is Stuart Sims. Stuart Sims is his name. His his, his first name. Um, and he changes to Max St. Vincent. Stuart Sims killed his first wife and he killed her in a way that you had to know something about an enemy. However, Max St. Vincent's wife, Marjorie, was murdered in a way, and we, we you're just like, what the heck? How did this woman die? She went down in something grimy and dirty, and it's revealed, dun dun dun, that Eloise killed her stepmother to avenge the death of her mother, who was killed by her father. That's how she got away. He tried. She tried to get away with murder. Exactly. Now here's the interesting twist about this whole thing: the daughter never goes to trial for this. So during the course of events, we all figure out, including the father, including everyone involved, that Eloise is the murderer. But the father's the one on trial. Yes. So as long as we've established doubt in the father, he gets off scot free and he never he doesn't sue the daughter. Yep. Because it turns out that they are kindred spirits in their craziness. And, and guess what? You know, 
everyone gets away with murder. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do, LBJ. And while all this is happening, as this this is the case that Keating and Associates is focusing on, there's another big case brewing back at the university. And that is the case, LBJ, of a missing sorority girl, Lila Stangard. Oh, Lila Stangard. Tell us about it because we've got 10 seconds and 10, 10 minutes and 10 seconds left. Go. Okay, Lila Stangard, she is a sorority girl. She has gone missing. In the first episode, there are posters everywhere around, and everyone is wondering, whatever happened to Lila Stangard? Nobody's been found, but she has not reappeared. Second episode, Lila, oh, we found her body. It was floating in the water tank above her sorority house. Mm -hmm. So we've got the body. The, the, we've confirmed that it's murder. Clearly, she's floating there, you know, like a bubble person, and then we <laughs> need <laughs> the, last, last, the last open question is who did it? I guess there's two open questions. Why did they do it? Uh -huh. oh, it's so crazy because there are a couple of suspects that have already come to light, LBJ, mm -hmm. and the first subject suspect that's come to light is Rebecca, who is a creepy next door neighbor of Wes's. Yes. LBJ, talk about Rebecca. Rebecca's just completely creepy. She's, I mean, I shouldn't say this because she's different. She's eclectic. She's eccentric in every and sense. And also of, creepy. And she, and she's <laughs> creepy. But Rebecca, <laughs> Rebecca is she, she's she's just Rebecca in her in her unique way. And Rebecca, um, aesthetically, isn't a person that you would you would trust immediately. However, if you are profiling somebody, like let's keep it real, you would suspect that you know she may have some kind of issue. She might envy some things about this, you know, this varsity all American gal. And, and and you would think that she might be suspected of murder. However, Wes has this weird affinity for her. He has his, he's taken a weird interest in, in really trying to help her or figure out how he could help this girl get off, how he could help her get away with murder if she, in fact, killed Lila Stangar. Wes came back to his apartment building because Rebecca is his next door neighbor, and he finds her being arrested. And he's like, "Don't do anything. Let me be. Like, let me kind of be your attorney without really being your attorney." And that's what Wes Wes's relationship was with Rebecca. And then there's another person who was suspected of the murder of um, of Lila Stangar, and that was uh, that's one of the the football players, right, Janine? Yeah, Griffin O'Reilly. Mm -hmm. Now, his name is Griffin O'Reilly. He's like the key star football player, you know, of the university. And Griffin O'Reilly, Wes had actually spotted Griffin O'Reilly in Rebecca's apartment just a few nights ago. And they were having a tiff. Very upsetting. So much so that Wes almost tried to come to her aid and comfort her after this big blowout between Rebecca and Griffin O'Reilly. Now, uh, subsequently, you know, Lila, um, uh, Rebecca, comes into Wes's apartment in the middle of the night and says, you know what, my water is not working, you know, I'm having a plumbing backup issue, may I use your shower at 3 a.m. in the morning? Mm -hmm. And Wes is like, okay, come on in, because again, as you said, this weird affinity. She comes in, she takes a random shower in his apartment in the middle of the night, after he sees Rebecca being carted away by the police. He has a little moment where he's like, oh my gosh, I recall Rebecca leaving something in my bathroom. And what was it, LBJ? I don't know. Oh, yeah. The cell yes. phone. The cell phone. Yes. <laughs> it was like, it landed in that slip someplace. Yes. I'm sorry. I was like, I don't know. Cause the time, no, you don't. Yes, seconds, it's I'm pressure. like nervous. Go. Yes. It was a cell phone, LBJ. But guess what? We can turn the cell phone on, but we can't get into there because right. it's password protected. protected. We don't know yes. the password. So here we have this phone that's been left by Rebecca, who's just been carted off to jail as a suspect for Lila Sangard's murder. Griffin O'Reilly, the football player, also carted off to jail. We don't know what evidence the police have, but they feel that these two are associated. Now, those are the official suspects. But LBJ, there's also an unofficial suspect that is being suspected by Annalise. 
Do you remember who that is? I think his name (laughs) might be Sam because Annalise is seeing all kinds of crazy stuff in Sam, who is her husband's cell phone. And Annalise, being the suspicious wife that she is, is her husband's cell phone, and she begins to try to go through his cell phone to figure out why is it that my husband is talking, why was it that my husband is talking to this missing or presumed deceased girl um, who's a student. Confirmed. At, confirmed confirmed yeah, I'm deceased. sorry. Yeah, that's right. Confirmed. Mm-hmm. Who is who was confirmed? Who was this dead girl? Why was my husband? Girl. Why was why was my husband talking to this dead girl? And so now, Annalise, aside, separate and apart from her students and their investigation, and everything. Remember, the show is working in like two different things. So, in present day, her husband <laughs> is dead, but in current, I mean, in the <laughs> previous day, her husband <laughs> is alive, and he's texting the dead girl from this <laughs> day over here. You got to kind of ping pong your mind back and forth while you're watching How to Get Away with Murder, right, Janaya? Yes, you do, because it's so crazy, because we're dealing with at least a few characters that are not there in the future, right? Primarily, right, exactly, right, <laughs> right. Primarily Sam. So we're flashing back and forth throughout the episode to periods where we were looking at Sam's dead body. He's dead and gone, and we're looking at the aftermath of it. And then we're also flashing back to this present moment where mm-hmm. we have all these open questions about Lila Sangard and Annalise, Stumbling across in her husband's phone, this correspondence with Lila before she was killed, she is wondering if Sam was having an affair with Lila. Yes. Turns out during the course of their conversation that Sam has done this before, LBJ. Mm-hmm. He has cheated with one of his students before. Wonder who that could be. We don't know. It's not revealed. But we do know that he's done it before, and Annalise is suspicious. She's so suspicious, LBJ, that she just asks him flat out, did you have an affair with Lila Sangard? And he and flat LBJ, out lied to her. He flat out lied. Yes, he did. He and flat out did, lied. He flat out lied about being in touch with her, and he continues to say that he's not having an affair. We don't know at this point whether that is true or not. But let me tell you what we do know. Let me tell you what we do know at mm-hmm. 3 minutes and 37 seconds left in the show. <laughs> we do know, exactly. We do know who is having an affair, and that is Annalise Keating, <laughs> the, the grand dame professor herself. And she mm-hmm. is sleeping with a detective who is also involved in the case that she was involved in in the first episode. And and, and, and his name is Detective Nate Leahy. That is mm-hmm. who Annalise Keating is sleeping with. And when I'm telling you she's sleeping with this man, she's sleeping with him on some other stuff. Like She's sleeping with him on some, like, for real Viola Davis, for real Viola Davis, you're going to go down like that? Wow, wow. Like, that's the kind of stuff that Annalise Keating is doing. So take a moment and watch season, I mean, season one, episode two, it's all her fault of how to get away with murder because it's Annalise Keating has all kinds of layers to her and we don't understand what's really going on in her mind. We've got two minutes and 52 seconds left, Janaya. No, what do you have to add? She calls in Nate. She calls in Nate, her lover, who long story short, she has scorned him by, you know, essentially taking advantage of her relationship with him to win a case, the case in wait, episode wait. one. She, so she Nate, scorned and screwed him, scorned and screwed him. Both scorned and screwed Nate Leahy. And so she literally, you know, is going to this man that she has scorned who has basically said, oh, you're going to play my face? You're not my lover anymore. He's broken up with her. She then goes to him and says, you know what? I suspect my husband had a relationship with Lila Sangar while she was alive yep. that was beyond a, a student-teacher relationship. Please investigate. Nate doesn't want to do it. He's like, no, I'm still mad at you. You're not my sad boo anymore. And right. she says, you know what? I really need you. You're the only person I can call on for help. And Nate agrees to go and check out Sam's alibi to see if he was somewhere where he was supposed to be at, a, a, at another university giving a speech the night that Lila Sangard was killed. Oh my gosh. It, it, this is something. It is something to watch. It is something to see. It's something to behold. It is something to keep up with. It is something to wonder what the heck is going to happen in this show. Uh, uh, oh, you hear that timer? That timer. That means we have a minute and a half left in the show tonight. We have really a minute 25 left. And whenever you hear that sound, ladies and gentlemen, that means we have to ask the question, how do you really get away with murder? So tonight, Based on this episode, how do you get away with murder? Well, I'm glad you asked, LBJ. I learned a lot about how to get away with murder from this episode. But more than anything, I just learned that one really great way to get away with murder is just to have your children do it. I thought it was really interesting (laughs) how Max St. Vincent just basically raised a psychopath. 
And then his daughter did the dirty work of killing off his wife. And so I think that's a great way to get away with it, LBJ. Have your kids do it. What did you learn, LBJ, about how to get away with murder? Here's how I think you can get away with murder. You can get away with murder by getting the facts to help pull off the case. And if you go back and watch this episode, we talked to you um, before about one of the students. His name is Connor Walsh. Connor Walsh. Connor Walsh is what I call the jump off of the, the students in, in How to Get Away with Murder. And with 27 seconds left in this show, Connor became the jump off of all jump offs by hat because we could by getting access to the IT guy. And when he calls him booty call IT guy. So you learn you know how you can get away with murder? Give up the booty to the man with all the passwords. And that's how you get away with murder. That's all I got for you. And it's nine seconds left. Janiah, I have fun with this tonight. So much fun, LBJ. Looking forward to episode three. We're we're off in two, one. Thank you so much. Have a good night everybody. Bye bye. Bye.